Syria, where the president is still insisting he will not step down despite losing the December the 1st election, as West African leaders and Western powers urge him to hand over power peacefully. Yaya Jame initially considered defeat on state television shortly after the polls, this after spending 22 years in power. But a week later, he reversed his uh, position, denouncing the election results and then demanding a new vote. Jami says, and I quote, unless the court decides the case, there will be no inauguration on January the 19th, end quote. His political party has lodged a complaint with the Supreme Court to overturn the December vote result. And political analyst Ibrima Chogan joins us now from London via Skype to talk to us on the latest development uh, uh, in Gambia. Many thanks for joining us on TVC News. Uh, now, President Jamis says unless the case, the case is uh, had in court, it will not step down and there won't be any inauguration in January. Now, do you think this is a case of he who pays the piper dictates the tune? I don't think so. We are dealing with a very unstable and delusional leader. I mean, he lost the elections squarely. And if you listen to his um, accept uh, when he conceded defeat, he quoted the correct figures that were used by the Independent Electoral Commission when they revised the figures. This was a system that was rigged in his favor and he lost squarely. Now, let me come to the Supreme Court. There was no Supreme Court because he dismissed um, the judges who were there. Some of them were Gambians. He dismissed them. So there was only this Nigerian guy who's the Chief Justice. And this Chief Justice uses Jame's um, party manifesto. He was there when Jame was nominated using part Jame's party manifesto. He was in the campaign. There are no judges. How can that judge decide on, uh, on a case? Jame has been warned, square and fair. And I think if he doesn't respond, the international community, particularly ECOWAS, and when I say ECOWAS, particularly Nigeria and Senegal, have a responsibility, uh, as it was agreed by ECOWAS, to enforce the will of the Gambian people. Uh, Ebrima, the question was put earlier um, to another analyst as to what Adama Barrow's uh, options are so he can, of course, enjoy the mandate uh, given to him by the people to rule them. Uh, and someone said he's in a quagmire. Is that w what you see, even though he enjoys the support of leaders from across the region and even beyond? How do you uh, um, analyze now the position uh, that uh, Barrow will be in now? Barrow is in a strong position. He's not in a quagmire. I think people who are talking, they have to understand that the majority of the Gambian armed forces and security forces uh, are with Barrow. They are not with Jame. Jame, the people who are with him are some of his guys who are in the presidential guard, people who know that they have something to lose. Because uh, we have been discussing and having informal contacts with the security forces and uh, the majority are with the Gambian people. I mean, you have seen that um, since the election was peaceful, I mean, nothing happened. So, I mean, the Gambian security forces are not going to commit suicide. They're not going to be able to fight if, if there is an ECOWAS intervention force, etc. So, I think here, most of them are respecting the legitimacy of the constitution that Jame uh, has, has, you know, legal power until the 17th of January. But after that, uh, you will see a lot of surprises that are going to happen. Mm. All right, now, uh, Barrow's supporters are patiently waiting for January the 19th to see if there will yes. be inauguration, and Jame is saying that he's not going to let power go. Now, do you in any way foresee a peaceful way out of this current situation? Yes, I, I know Jame very well. I mean, for those of your listeners who doesn't know me, I trained him when I was in the Zandarmori. And I knew him since high school. Um, I knew him very well. Don't look at the bravado and etc. Et the guy is a coward. I think if Echo was really shows their determination that they will come to the Gambia, he will negotiate a way out. Hmm. Oh, uh, all right. Um, uh, Ebrima, also tell us um, whether you think, um, looking at the precedence of um, uh, the president now, uh, President Jami, should he be prosecuted uh, by the time this is all over, as everyone is hopeful of? No, I think my, my, that is really a matter for President-elect Barrow. But I think what is important now for us Gambians is really to look at how we're going to have a genuine reconciliation. 
But a general reconciliation also, there have been a lot of victims. Uh, myself talking to you, I've been detained two and a half years illegally. But there have been people who have not seen their relatives, their bodies. Some of them, we don't know where they have been detained, etc. So I think we need to establish a Truth and Reconciliation Commission to find out exactly what has happened so that loved ones would look know where, they are, where, where their loved ones' bodies are or the people who are detained will know. Then from there, we as a Gambian people with the elected government can look at what, what is the next step. But I think the crucial step now is for Gambia, Gambians to come together so that we can move forward, establish rule of law, good governance, and also make sure that the Gambian judiciary is independent and it should be the most powerful uh, it should be the most powerful uh, institution in the in, in 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 going forward rather than being the army or security forces all right now you said earlier that uh, you you think that uh, president jami could want to cut a deal with uh, uh, the western powers uh, talk about uh, ECOWAS uh, leaders uh, just to find a peaceful way out of this uh, current situation but don't you think yes though ECOWAS has said that Senegal could lead a, a military force to Gambia to effect uh, uh, the proper change. But don't you think uh, President Jame could have a, a plan up his sleeves, knowing that he promoted all the military officers, senior officers, uh, a day or two days before he came out to say that he was no longer uh, party to the current uh, electoral results? Well, I'm talking to you as a former colonel of the Gambian Armed Forces. I mean... We do not have a proper armed forces like in other countries. What we have is a militia. Most of those colonel you are talking about, some of them are promoted from sergeant to captain, from captain to colonel. They've never done any staff college or junior division of college. Most of those general cannot even speak proper English. You know, those though they were just promoted because they come in some cases they come from his own ethnic, and in other cases they just show loyalty. Do you think those people are not tactically sound? They would not fight. I know what I'm telling you. In 1994, when Jammin was overthrowing the democratically elected government, I was the only officer who stood and fought um, and, and fired upon Jammin and, and his mutinous uh, troops. That time, we even have a professional army. Now, there is no professional army. Okay, there are some good soldiers here and there and some good officers because Jammin has dismissed any officer who is professional, Jammin has dismissed him. And that individual is, as, is in exile or has been etc. So what we have is a bunch of militias, guys, and his presidential guard, I know uh, he has some weapons, whether he has some or other some heavy weapons, but by the nature of Jammin's regime, those weapons have never been tested. And any military who's listening to me, there are a lot of military experts from Nigeria and all over West Africa listening to me, if you have we uh, heavy weapons, you need to zero them. You need to grease them. You need to fire them. So that, um, because our country in Africa is very hot and the metal will extract and contract. So all those heavy weapons that he has, most of them are useless because they were in containers for a long time. Jammy doesn't trust the battalions. They don't exercise. They don't do anything. And I, no, I, have, I have spoken to a lot of uh, Gambian soldiers, both officers, NCOs, and men, who have said that they are not going to die for Jammy. Why would they die for Jammy when the Gambian people have decided? Ebrima, um, you are a Gambian living abroad, so you have um, some perspective. Of course, you are still in tune with what's going on at home, and then you also bring uh, to bear some, uh, uh, well, European perspective now. H how do you explain how um, Jame has been uh, ruling for this long with his um, what's been called outlandish uh, principles and all that? How do you think he's been ruling uh, for this long now for a country that's, well, not so large, uh, yet, you know, he still manages to, to have a firm grip now on his people until now, so to speak. Is it that uh, the world hasn't been speaking loud enough? Or what would you attribute now to his um, uh, prolonged stay in office? No, he was just lucky in the sense that Gambia does not have uh, that strategic importance like Senegal or like, like, like Nigeria, where you have some minerals or etc. And also, everybody just uh, were dismissing him, and then he knew what he was doing. Basically, Gambia, if you know the geography of Gambia, we are surrounded by Senegal. So he had no external threat. His threat was his internal threat, um, building a militia just to repress his own people, and nobody talked. And also, to be fair, we have to be honest with each other. With each other. Quite a number of Gambians were complicit in Jammes' uh, exercise. I mean, uh, a lot of people, you, you got to understand, there was a government there 
which was democratic, but it was there for a long period. And when you had the change of government, there were a lot of opportunists who went towards Jame for, for whatever various reasons and, and tried to help him. And then Jame, out of that process, started to eliminate them one by one, one by one. So it is uh, a combination of uh, issues and effects and circumstances that have led to what has happened. But I think the Gambian people have awoken now, and this type of thing will never happen again. All right, uh, Ebrima Choga, we await to see what will happen in the Gambia as uh, time goes by till January the 19th. Thank you for your analysis on uh, the political situation in the Gambia.